Should you upgrade to the iPhone 15s if you're coming from the 14s, or the 13s, or the 12s, or the 11s, or even the 10s and 10R? In this video, we'll go over every single major upgrade to help you decide if you should upgrade to the 15s or not. Also, we're giving away an iPhone 15 and a 15 Pro to celebrate the launch of our new app, Wallpapers. The details on how to enter both giveaways right here as well as in the description. And now, a word from Casetify, our sponsor. Casetify's new range of iPhone 15 cases are not only trendy, but also very durable. Click the link below and keep watching to see our drop test later in the video. Okay, so starting off with the comforts, the iPhone XS, XR, and 11s, they both had this rounded frame that was super comfortable to hold, but also very slippery. The 12s, 13s, and 14s had this super flat frame that was very grippy, but also quite uncomfortable. The 15s essentially combine the two frame designs into one that's still flat, but then curves towards the top and the bottom, making it both comfortable and grippy. Plus, since the 15 Pros are also a bit narrower than the 12 Pro, 13 Pro, and 14 Pro, uh, if you ever found those phones to be too wide, then you're gonna love the 15s, especially the 15 Pro Max. In terms of the weight, the 15 models are super light, with the standard 15 now being lighter than the 10s and the 15 Pro now being the lightest Pro iPhone ever since the 10s. And I can definitely tell the difference using them in my hand. So if the weight was ever an issue for you, then the iPhone 15s are a very good upgrade here. Durability is where the 15s are actually worse. The Pro models now come with a new titanium frame as opposed to the stainless steel frame that we've had on the Pro models ever since the iPhone 10. This is why they can be so light, but if you scratch this frame, you'll easily reveal the raw titanium color underneath on the space gray and blue titanium models. And because titanium is less rigid than stainless steel, dropping the phone now has a much higher chance of breaking your back glass. All iPhones are also water resistant. From the iPhone 12 onwards, they have a six meter water resistance up to uh, 30 minutes. Now the iPhone 11 Pro has a lower four meter water resistance. The iPhone 11 has two, uh, whereas the 10s and 10R only have one. So if you do like taking underwater photos and scuba diving, then the newer models are going to be better here. So in terms of the overall durability, the best ones here are actually the 14s, the 13s, and the 12s, and they also feature uh, ceramic shield glass on the front. And lastly, when it comes to the look, the regular 15s do get a frosted glass back, which looks amazing. This is what we've had on all pro iPhones since the iPhone 11 Pro, and the frosted glass back not only looks significantly better, but it also leaves no fingerprints. So yeah, this is a superb upgrade. Overall, if design is super important to you, then the regular 15s are an awesome upgrade from every single past iPhone model. The 15 Pros are also a good upgrade, it's just that, like I said, they're not as durable when it comes to drops because of the titanium frame. In the end, I do find the 15s to be way more comfortable than all the previous iPhone models, which itself could warrant an upgrade for you. When it comes to the display, there are a lot of improvements that we got over the years, with the biggest one being 120Hz Pro Motion. The 13 Pro, the 14 Pro, and the 15 Pro, they all have it. So if you're coming from any other iPhone model, uh, this will really make a huge difference to usability, as everything will feel twice as fluid. Another big upgrade is the outdoor brightness. The 14 Pro, 15, and 15 Pro can go up to 2000 nits outdoors, making them incredibly easy to read. All the iPhones from the 14 down to the 11 Pro have had 800 nits of brightness outdoors, with the 11, 10R, and 10S only having 625 nits. So yeah, big difference here. Oh, and by the way, if you love these wallpapers, uh, you can find them in our new wallpapers app on both iOS and Android. We have 10 packs out right now with more stunning packs launching every week, starting from the first Friday of October. Another upgrade is the brightness when viewing HDR content. So all iPhones from the 11 Pro onwards support HDR at 1200 nits. Then the iPhone 14 Pro and 15s, uh, they support up to 1600 nits of HDR brightness sustained. So watching movies is even more immersive on these models. We also have the dynamic island on the iPhone 14 Pro and 15s, uh, which is quite fun to use, and it can also be useful in some instances where, let's say, you're expecting an Uber, as you'll be able to track it straight in the Dynamic Island, no matter which app you're using. The Dynamic Island also gets rid of the notch, so your content will look more immersive on the newer iPhone models. Plus, they also feature thinner bezels, with the 15 Pros having the thinnest bezels on any iPhone. We also have always-on functionality on the 14 Pros and the 15 Pros, which works great with the new standby mode 
in iOS 17, as you can always have a desk or bedside clock. And as a bonus change, if you're coming from an iPhone XR or an iPhone 11, you're also getting an OLED display, which makes a huge difference when watching content, with colors popping way more and blacks looking inky black. Overall, if you're coming from an iPhone 14 Pro, you're not really getting any display improvements, so no point in upgrading. But if you're coming from literally anything else, uh, I would say the display improvements are pretty significant, as you get 120Hz, a much higher outdoor brightness, and of course, no notch. Now, if you're planning on getting a new iPhone 15, you should definitely keep it protected, especially given these new durability concerns. And that's where Casetify, our sponsor, comes in. Casetify's new range of iPhone 15 cases gives you tons of customization options and multiple levels of safety. Here we have Casetify's EcoShock versus their competition's lining, and as you can see, the impact is greatly absorbed by their design so that none of the shock is transferred to your device. Their new Ultra Bounce case with six layers of protection is their toughest case yet. Tested 260 times with a max drop height of 32.8 feet, offering 10 times military grade drop protection, hopefully our iPhone 15 Pro Max survives this drop test. Three, two, one. Seems to be fine, the front is fine. Taking the case off and the back is fine too. And so are the sides. There we go, the iPhone 15 Pro Max survives. For more minimalist designs, they offer thinner bounce cases at six times the military grade drop protection, with their slimmest option being the impact case, both of which are now 16% slimmer than the previous models. And one of our custom impact cases uses the ring stand, which is great for hands-free viewing. Casetify has plenty of options to choose from, all of which you can customize to make your own, with a 15% discount at casetify.com slash zoneoptech. So what about the camera? Well, in terms of outdoor shots, if you're upgrading from the iPhone 14 Pro, you'll get better highlight retention as well as a sharper image, thanks to the new 24 megapixel default image output as opposed to 12. And this really applies to any older iPhone model, like the regular 14, the 13 Pro, the 13, the 12 Pro, the 12, the 11, the 11 Pro, the 10R, and the 10S. So as long as you have good lighting, you won't really notice a big difference. Zoom-wise, the 15 Pro Max does have the best zoom with that new 5X module, although the difference compared to the 15 Pro's 3X is very minor. If you're coming from a 10S, 11 Pro, or 12 Pro that had a 2X module, you'll notice a boost too, even with the standard 15s, thanks to their 2X sensor crop. And same goes for the 13 Pro and the 14 Pro's 3X module, as the processing on the 15 Pro's 3X has been improved. And if you're upgrading from any iPhone model that did not have a dedicated zoom module, you'll get a major zoom upgrade, even if you simply go with a 15 Pro. In terms of the Ultrawide, if you're coming from the 13 Pro or 14 Pro, you're only going to see differences in nighttime and not daytime. If you're coming from the 12s or 11s, the 15 Pro's do have superior Ultrawide hardware for a slightly sharper image, and you'll also get macro, which only the 13 Pro, 14 Pro, and 15 Pros have. When it comes to the front camera, if you're coming from the 14s, you'll get better highlight retention in brighter scenes. The difference becomes even greater coming from the 13s, and then the quality keeps dropping further and further. Also, the 11 Pros and newer do have a wider angle, with a higher 12 megapixel resolution as opposed to 7. And the iPhone 14s also introduced autofocus on the front camera, which can make a difference to your shots. In terms of video, there's no difference coming from the 14s, with the only exception being able to switch between all lenses when recording 4K60 video. Same goes for the 13s and the 12s, not a lot of difference aside from the softer features like cinematic mode and action mode. If you're coming from the 11s, you'll also get HDR video, but other than that, even the 10s video still looks comparable to the 15s. The bigger improvements are in terms of low light, where even coming from the 14s will give you a more detailed and clearer image, and the improvements will become more and more significant the older your iPhone is. And of course, if you're coming from the 10s or 10R, which did not have a night mode at all, the improvements are going to be very significant. A similar story in terms of low light video, from the 14s to the 15s, we do get a slightly brighter image. And that difference becomes greater and greater the further down the line you go. From the 12s, you already get a big upgrade, which becomes even bigger with the 11s. And of course, from the 10s and 10R, the upgrades in low light video will be massive. So yeah, if you mostly take daytime shots, you're not really going to see a gigantic improvement aside from less blown out skies. But when it comes to zoom and low light shots, the improvements over the years are very big. On top of this, you also get pro features such as ProRes, ProRaw, and Log for more editing flexibility afterwards. Now, when it comes to the performance, there are two upgrades that we kept on getting over the years. 
the chip improvements and the extra RAM. With the 15 Pros, we're getting 8 gigabytes of RAM. All iPhones from the 12 Pro onwards have had 6 gigs of RAM. The only exception being the regular 13 that has had 4, just like all the other older models. And honestly, even 6 gigs of RAM has been a struggle for me. So if you've also had issues with your apps constantly reloading from the background, then the 15 Pros should make a difference here. In terms of the chip upgrades, the A17 Pro inside the 15 Pros allows you to play AAA console quality games like Resident Evil Village, AC Mirage, and many more later in the year, which could be a very big deal for you. Now, in terms of the raw performance, yes, we have received some good upgrades over the years, and here are some quick numbers and stats. But to me, even the 12 Pro still feels quite fluid. But if you're coming from an 11 or older and you feel like uh, the newest iOS releases are a bit sluggish, then that's another good reason to consider upgrading, especially if you're upgrading to a 120Hz Pro iPhone. Not even to mention the base storage that's been bumped to 128 gigabytes with the iPhone 13s from 64 um, and 256 base on the iPhone 15 Pro Max from 128 on the 14 Pro Max and 64 on the iPhone 11 Pro Max. With a top tier storage on the recent models also being bumped to one terabyte. So if you're thinking about upgrading just for the performance improvements, then that already means that you are experiencing some issues, in which case I would consider upgrading, or at least not replacing your battery if your iPhone isn't displaying peak performance capability in the settings anymore. Now, aside from all of these changes, the newer models also introduce a bunch of other features that you might find useful. The 15s now come with USB Type-C, which is by far the biggest upgrade, with a Pro model supporting up to 10 gigabit per second transfer speeds. They also feature an action button, which I absolutely love, that replaces the mute switch. And you can customize it to do anything you want, from launching the camera to even opening your garage door. The 15 Pros now have Wi-Fi 6C as opposed to Wi-Fi 5 on the 10s and 10R, and Wi-Fi 6 on all the other models, giving you double the speeds if you have a fast enough router. And we also get a newer Bluetooth 5.3 standard on the iPhone 15s and 14s compared to Bluetooth 5 on all the other iPhone models. So if you have the second gen AirPods Pros that also support Bluetooth 5.3, they'll connect faster and work at longer ranges. The 14s also introduced Emergency SOS, which can literally be a lifesaver if you venture out in a lot of remote places often. Then the 12s introduced MagSafe and 5G, and you can already find loads of MagSafe accessories on the market today and the 11, 12, 13, and 14s, uh, they've all featured some slight speaker improvements. So the older the iPhone model that you're coming from is, uh, the bigger the speaker difference will be. Of course, if any of these features are important to you, then you should definitely consider upgrading. And when it comes to the battery, I've personally seen a big improvement jumping from the iPhone 12s to the iPhone 13s. Uh, the 14s, especially the 14 Pro, was quite a letdown, and the 15s, they do seem to be better again, especially the 15 Plus. So if you're coming from anything older than the 12, then you'll see some big battery life improvements with all of these newer models. If you're coming from the 13 or the 14, you'll still see some improvements, just nothing major. I'd say the biggest battery life improvement would be if you're upgrading to the iPhone 15 Plus or the iPhone 15 Pro Max, as those two have an exceptionally long battery life. In the end, I think the 15s are a very nice upgrade, even over the 14s in a lot of cases. But of course, it's really up to you in terms of how much you value all of these changes over the years. Comment down below with which iPhone model you're upgrading from, and don't forget about our iPhone 15 and 15 Pro giveaway, full details in the description. And yeah, stay tuned for more iPhone 15 videos coming in the next few days. I'm Daniel, this means Zone of Tech, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Zone of Tech, signing out. Cheers.